welcome to the special edition of Talk Time. My guest today is Mr. P.B. Acharya, the governor of Nagaland, someone who knows the Northeast almost like the back of his hand, one of the most proactive governors in the region. He has been associated with this region closely since 1991, ever since he was elected a national executive member of the Bharatiya Janata Party. He had also introduced something called a college on wheels for the Northeastern region, a very, very unique project that was a part of the Delhi University campaign, literacy campaign for the country and Northeast was what he looked after. Uh, Governor Charya, welcome to my program. Namaskar to all the viewers. I would like to say Namaste, states to say Namaskar. You may be surprising what is this? Namaste is, uh, this is the one. All the eight states are covered by Namaste World. And for Nagaland, my state, I'm the governor for five years, I'll be completing it. A for Assam, I was also governor for 20 months of Assam. Then comes M, Meghalaya, Manipur, Mizoram. Another A, Arunachal. I was also governor for 10 months in Arunachal. Then comes S, Sikkim, T, Tripura also, I was given a charge of Tripura also. E is East, N is North, Northeast, and Namaste, Kyoshi Namaskar. Wish you all very, very happy time. Right. Second term of the month. Absolutely. Very unique way of introducing the Northeastern region. And that, that goes a lot to say how closely you are linked with the region. I thank you very much. Sir, this is thank, my fourth thank you. year. Thank you, fourth thank you very year much. report. I am the only governor. I yeah. am not boasting. Every year I bring out my report to the people what I did apart my constitutional duties. It is outreaching the people. This is the result of that every year. I'm giving it to the fourth year, right. fifth year is coming. Right, right. Uh, now you see, let's start with the massive mandate that Prime Minister Narendra yeah. Modi has received. Uh, he has been re-elected Prime Minister. My question to you, what kind of an impact such a huge mandate have in a remote region like the Northeast, particularly in a small state like Nagaland? Mm. This kind of a decisive verdict we have the Prime Minister once again at the helm of affairs mm -hmm. in this country, Mr. Modi. Now, what kind of an impact can it have in a region like the Northeast, particularly in a state like Nagaland? See, it is a historical victory. I am originally born in Karnataka, settled in Maharashtra. We have 28 seats in Karnataka. 25 seats we have won, the BJP has won. The people the mandate was for nationalism, strength and nationalism. Pseudo secularism has been completely denied. We want to have identity, strong identity, a vibrant, peaceful country, a prosperous country. True. And that has been done. True. And he is always telling great our Prime Minister, unless Northeast develops, India cannot develop. This is the first time a Prime Minister giving stress for the development of every part of the country should develop equitably. And this agenda of Look East Act is so, taken up uh, very the nicely. Prime Minister Modi usually describes the Northeast as the Astha Lakshmi. So because of the Sanskrit world and the prosperity of that, he says we have a lot of natural resources here, wonderful universities are there. Tejpur University, one of the best universities, Dibrugar, Gavati. Right. Now, 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 coming back to my question, uh, what kind of an impact do you think this is going to have in a small state like Nagaland of which you are the governor? To be very frank, there is a fear and there is a great respect for this great leader. Whatever wrong Among doing, the well, Nagas, you mean? Among the Nagas, right. among the tribals. Uh, earlier, nobody cared for them or counted for them because of the number, too small number. Now everybody thinks, yes, in the committee of the whole different diversity of this country, they also have a voice, an equity voice, equal voice. So that people have felt it. And uh, sincerely, the party is working for the Northeast to develop it. it the potentiality of it is great. And uh, our great late Nanaji Deshmukh, yeah. who was the uh, general secretary, once reporting to our Atalji, late Atalji, he said, in the coming years, this is long back, either Arunachal or Nagaland will be the richest state in the whole of the country. Because we have got oil, we have got coal, we have got hydro, but, electricity. Yeah, 
But do you think these resources has to be mobilized, channelized in the right direction yeah. so that the benefits come to the state's concern? Yeah. Now, what is happening is Assam produces soil, the rate of royalty is determined by the central government. Mm -hmm. You know, but similarly, Nagaland also has a lot of resources. There has been some issue with the local people. They, they own the land, therefore mm -hmm. they're not allowing extraction of natural resources, including crude. Now, 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 okay. do you think this should be reversed? The state giving the royalty to the centre? This is according to a minor issue. Mm -hmm. Oil is exploited. It is exploited at least. But other things are yet to be exploited. We have plenty of water, plenty of minerals. One Meghalaya has got hills are all wonderful Correct. coal. Absolutely. Millions and millions of tons of coal. We are not exploited yet. Then comes our reality. But in the case of some tribal state, the land belongs to the people. Somewhere some change of mind has to be there. Have you been working on this? Absolutely. You were working on thinking, this? Yeah. Because we are allotted... How much ground do you think you have covered uh, uh, to, to come to a middle point? Somebody, so that somebody with the clear thought has to be very strict about the people's mind. The people have got a self-centered, money-oriented mind in many places. He said, no, public interest should be a supreme. In the public interest, your interest is also Whether served. it is a public sector company, whether it is a private, private players, interest. but Anything. you are saying, as the governor of Nagaland, you are yeah. saying the public interest should come topmost priority. Supreme. Their interest cannot be violated. Violet. So, and if in you, the interest if you, of the public... So, that's the a very important... Sorry, yeah. this is a very important statement you are making. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, you are saying that... Uh, we, we were talking this in the context of crude oil extraction in Nagaland. Any, any, rich in natural, any resources, natural resources, public, public interest has to be foremost. Formal. Any natural resource doesn't belong to any individual or any tribe. It is God-given and it should be used in that manner. Because but while doing so, you were saying that interest of the local people has to be kept in mind. That is to be kept no, in mind. No. It should not be the supreme thought. Absolutely. Supreme thought should be public interest. Public interest. And the local people should change their mindset because public interest includes their interest. That is not denied. So our greediness should not come across the public interest. Right. Now, now uh, you know, coming to the election of uh, Mr. Modi as the Prime Minister for the second time with this huge verdict. Now, he has said that his topmost priority in the Central Hall of Parliament, his first address to the NDA legislators, mm -hmm. 353 Hughes. Uh, now, he said that Sabka Saat, Vikas, and this was. Now, he is particularly given a push to the, you know, the outreach to the minorities. Yeah. Now, minorities not only include Muslims in this country, that is right. minorities also includes, everybody thinks that minorities means Muslim. Muslims, but minorities means Muslims plus Christians, yeah. uh, plus Sikhs, and there are a lot of other people Over who are bracketed as minorities. Now, in the context of Nagaland, do you think that has come with a, that has had a very good message to the Christian population that dominates a state like Nagaland? Do you think it's a very, very positive message? Yeah. See, in number-wise, our population is only 20 lakhs. Right. And 6% of the whole total population, there are Christians are there. It is a message to the minority, religious minority. When you say minority, people think it is only Muslims. It is right. not that. It's all the Buddhists are there and indigenous religion followers. Even in the tribals, those who are not converts to Christianity, they should also have the right. For they example, the Doni Polo Doni faith Polo. in Ar Arakam, Rani Gaidin's Haraka is there, yes. even Angamis. They are standing to their old culture. And we have to, this is a secular country, Sarva Dharma Samabhavana, all are equal in the eyes of the state. So I think the message has gone very clearly that BJP has been made to look like a religious party mm -hmm. by the opponents earlier. I am an apolitical man as a governor, but I was a political activist and I was working in these areas for 40 years in 1991, my visit to Nagaland was 1965 True. first. Yeah. So this misunderstanding is the creation of deficiency of the party. If they come out, they are not a religious party, they are a national party. In that so, case, yeah. So, so now, you know, uh, I mean, yes, as the governor, uh, I don't know whether I should ask you this question. You have, you have made it clarified that you are an apolitical yeah. person. Governors are expected yeah. to be yeah. apolitical. But my but question is, you know, uh, as the prime minister of this country, uh, he has very clear, categorically given this, uh, this proactive reach to the minorities. Now you are saying that five crore 
minority students to get scholarships. Yeah. This is one of his most major, uh, major statements, major announcements, and that is he is trying to demonstrate that what he means, he means really business. Yeah. Now my question is, uh, uh, my question follows, you know, do you think that is going to go a long way in, you know, uh, getting the vishwas, as the Prime Minister said, the, the trust of the minorities? I'm, let's talk about the Nagaland context. BJP had won 12 seats, yeah. but there was some apprehension, as you yourself said, BJP was thought to be a religious party. But Prime Minister is trying to get rid of this image of yeah. the Hobbes, Hobbes mm -hmm. party. No, no. See, the, his statement from the beginning, when he came to power in the first time itself, the way he interacted... Our earlier Prime Minister, UP Prime Minister, was from elected from Assam, but he didn't come to Nagaland. Absolutely, yes. But he is the person, Prime Minister Modi ji, came for the our Hwan Bill Festival first time after 17 years. And our president also, he came. That showed that they love each state which has been denied earlier for some other reasons. I think people he has won the confidence and he is expecting the victory itself. Everybody voted for the governance which he did it. Absolutely. Yeah. Now the most important question, uh, Governor Charya, in uh, every Naga or everybody who watches the Northeast yeah. is the Naga political problem. Yeah. Now with this verdict, mm. uh, now the government has become even stronger than 2014. Now Prime Minister Narendra Modi's hands have been strengthened further yeah. by the numbers. Mm. Uh, now do you think, uh, you know, this would uh, help uh, in a quick resolution of the Naga political problem now. We have been talking uh, for the last 22 okay, years. Yeah. Now, do you think uh, this is going to help? Uh, as per my understanding and uh, reading the situation, the next five years will be a crucial five years for the Northeast. Many, many very crucial and sensitive problems are there. One of the main problems is of Nagaland peace. I think it will be solved very amicably because even one group goes out all inclusive thinking should be there. That is, um, all the efforts are there. And there are some constraints are there, some of the new demands, they have to be convinced. You are first Indians and that can be there. Whatever other states are enjoying, that absolutely wants to enjoy. There are some demand. I am sure within five years, our Nagaland will be on the peace line and will be the one of the economically richest state when there is peace. Absolutely. On that note, we'll go for a short break, but don't go away. When I come back, I will continue to have this conversation with Governor P.B. Acharya. Welcome back. I am in conversation with the Governor of Nagaland, Mr. P.B. Acharya. Uh, we have been discussing the very critical issue of the Naga peace. You're saying that uh, uh, we are at an advanced stage and you are saying that some of the new demands that has to be amicably yeah. resolved. So what are some of them? You have covered, the government have covered a lot of ground, a mm -hmm. lot of issues have already been, uh, an understanding has been reached. Yeah. So what is the critical point? What could be some of the points? Uh, Why is uh, it taking so long? Interlocutor, uh, interlocutor Ravi is doing a wonderful job. But some demands are... Uh, not in the interests of Nagas or of the nation. They want a separate flag, separate constitution, and separate anthem. I think uh, many of the states have got a song, state song. Yeah, Assam has one. Assam has one. Karnataka, in South, every state has got one. So there is uh, no problem, I told Ravi also, there is no problem in giving a, a song, state song. A state song. But it cannot be called an anthem. Anthem. State song is praising yeah. the nature and, and that all of things. It is a wonderful, inspiring personality. What about a flag? There is already the, a precedence in yeah, Kashmir. The, this is the only state. It is an aberration. That is, Shama Prasad Mukherjee said, Do Vidhan, Do Pradhan, Do Nishan, Nahi Chalega, Nahi Chalega. So that won't be there. We will, should not repeat it. Nehru did it for something. But that should not be repeated anywhere. Mm -hmm. Constitution, no. One constitution. So you have to see that Dr. Ambedkar has made a constitution. Everything is inclusive. All your ideas, all your aspirations are included in that. So nobody should go. Peace should not be hindered by these two reasons. I appeal to all Nagas to come forward and accept 
the verdict of an piece of thing and market so it. so uh, you know any negotiation uh, involves give and take yeah the fact that whether it is the nscn i am whether it is the nscn k or the six other naga national political groups mm. uh, they have agreed to come for negotiations yeah. when do you come for negotiations because you already know that you have to give and take okay. so you have to give something to get something isn't it they are they are giving very fact that they have formed a state for 20 lakh people now the demand of the enpo eastern naga peoples organization to have a separate state it is not a viable proposal their problems should be solved their issues are economic development that has to be solved very sincerely mm -hmm. i my visit to nagaland in 1963 when pcl over the chief minister mm -hmm. at that time i attended the assembly session mm -hmm. 20 members from the enpo area were nominated at that time even so, but, today but even today their was, demand is yeah you were saying that enpo a separate eastern nagaland state is not a viable proposition but what is the alternative model I, I that the government I, can offer I, what I don't is say, your proposal and i don't say it's not a viable proposal that demands and the requirements should be faced and addressed properly the so, demands should be addressed, addressed properly so nagaland is a small state of 20 lakhs so the, there is no problem and nature is very firm bounty so you are saying that nagaland is a small state you are saying that unpo is now demanding a separate eastern nagaland you was okay. all you are saying is that nagaland is a small state of 20 lakh people it should not be further dismembered uh -huh. and at the same time the grievances of the people who are demanding eastern nagaland should, should be addressed be properly the de demand were not addressed that is why they are asking for a separate state so the reason how can it be addressed have you examined this issue as the governor absolutely what is it your is. your road ahead according to you see for any state or any country to progress education is the most important thing address have more and more educational institutions in the npo area real educational institution not the government schools only even private schools and private colleges ppa public private partnership colleges and their skill based education people will be very happy what about new districts there districts are formed there is no problem one more district was formed only last year also we have 12 districts uh, what about no, the, what about a regional council or a development council in the territory nothing wrong with according within the constitution whatever is possible to bring up so, the backward so people so you you are even all right you can even yeah. go to the extent of creating a new development council whatever name not a name as for the constitution if there is a provision for a backward district to come forward what is aspirational district modi ji saying yeah same thing you give a name but think give all your but thoughts and possible. energy yes that possible. is possible that has to be done but it doesn't look like had been done so have right. you had formal meetings with the enpo representatives many and times many and times in this four or five and have now. you spoken your mind out like absolutely that, uh, they love they love me they respect me almost all the people I have been raising their voice also in the center as whatever is possible they have great hopes now but, now hmm. now to put things up, because this interview uh, governor charya will be watched all across the northeast and beyond i'm very happy, now, very happy about it yes now why i'm asking you i'm asking you so that there is no confusion as the governor of nagaland are you prepared to take up the grievances of the people who are demanding enpo representatives and the people to the central government like you were saying that more educational facilities yeah. districts are already there if necessary within the purview of the constitution there is no harm in giving yeah. whatever autonomy is necessary according to me the demand for a separate state eastern nagaland is the reason of not being get taken care economically if you address that demand the second demand will not come wherever it is required as a governor as a citizen as an indian knowing not is little bit better i am prepared to go and explain and plead for those people anywhere in this thing absolutely that is a very clear cut statement yeah. coming from you as the governor of nagaland that you are going the to lover bat of, lover of nagaland lover of nagaland you are going to bat for the people you are going to also take up because, the matter with be, the central government because my thinking is once nagaland becomes quiet nagar will be peaceful whole of north east will march for peace it is the genesis of all these areas so basically what governor pb acharya is saying that nagaland holds the key to peace in the north east region and he has also assured through this interview that he's going to take up whatever is possible in the central government to bat for peace in nagaland we'll go for another short break stay on don't go away <music> Welcome back. I'm 
am still in conversation with the governor of Nagaland, Mr. P. B. Acharya. You see, uh, now we have seen suddenly uh, the peace talks, the Naga peace talks are in, at an advanced stage. As the governor, you are also trying to play the role of a catalyst so that things are smoothened up mm -hmm. and we can have the peace acceptable solution. Now, at this juncture, we have seen that the government of Myanmar suddenly has stepped up its operations against Northeast Indian insurgents operating from its soil, operating against India from its territory. Uh, now, is it a good development? See, from their point of view, any country, if something is going on which is not required for the state's benefit, Myanmar might have thought all these incident groups is not a good thing for the development of Myanmar. They are taking action not because of India's benefit. They are taking action because of their own requirement. In that, our incident groups are working in that no man's land. Right. And in a way, it is a good thing that those people would like to have differences in what is happening in India. Everything can be solved by dialogue. They should come back and talk to the people and solve so, the problem. So, now there are already reports that, you know, uh, they are in the no man's land. Yeah. They are, they are getting pressure from the Myanmar's military. Yeah. And on our side, our troops have also intensified vizil. Obviously, that is a, that's the most expected thing. Mm -hmm. Now, if they are sending fillers that they would like to come into Indian territory, lay down arms and engage and join this and ongoing peace process. Yeah. So, as the governor, do you think uh, that should be encouraged? Do you think it's a good idea? Absolutely, absolutely. And when they lay down the arms, we should think of how best we can use their energy and those trained people. A separate entity of an army, they can be formed. They are trained for that. So, what is to be done? We have to assure them. They cannot, they have become sometimes robots. They don't know. They were fighting for the freedom or whatever it may be. So, we should think and from their eyes, how best they can be. If they have a desire to come and lay down their arms, nothing like that. We should so, have you received, you means, has the government, government. of Nagaland received uh, formal feelers from these people that they would like to come? Uh, some intelligence estimates say that about 400 militants are waiting along the border, waiting to come back. As soon as Indian authorities give them a green signal, they will come in. Many of the people may not be known. Technically, the state government, state governor, is not recognized by the underground groups in Nagaland. They say they are talking to the federal government. They are the government and there is no other government. So from that point yeah. of view, if they talk to us, their own thesis will break. So we have not been approached by them. They are approaching the right authority and the right authority will take a right action because the government is there. But, but you think that they should be allowed to come Absol in, they should allow, be allowed to lay their arms and they Ab should join the peace process? It will be 100%. good for the overall... Absolutely, it is correct. It is high time now. Now, one of the, one of the you know, uh, I'm jumping from question to question yeah. only for lack of time. Yeah. Uh, you see, um, uh, you know, another issue that has been plaguing Nagaland is the issue of corruption. Uh, 70 years after independence, we have seen many governments in Nagaland. Governments come and governments yeah, go. Yeah. But the infrastructure is so poor, more than 70 years after independence, the mm. roads are in terrible shape. Yeah. Uh, even from Dimapur, which is the main gateway to Kohima, it mm. takes uh, 100 kilometers, it takes up to 4 hours, sometimes it can be 5 hours due to landslides. So, in today's day of, day of science and technology, now. Is it, do you think corruption is at what level? Do you think you can really pursue a zero tolerance policy to yeah. deal with corruption in Nagaland? So the, all over the country there is corruption. But here in our the small Nagaland, it is visible very clearly to the people because of non-performing governance is level. But the present government <coughs> is taking their level best to find out the solution for that. There is a change of mind after the Modi ji has taken over. And this is second term will surely create a fear and respect for the right governance. And I'm sure these five years are more and more critical years for the North East. There are many problems for the North East. It will be solved in a peaceful manner and from the national interest. Because the mandate is for the strengthening the nationalism, which has been weakened in for different reasons in the North East. So many things will happen. Now, uh, as I have said in the introduction, you are a very, very proactive governor. Yeah. Uh, even when you, you were a governor of Assam earlier, even when you come to Assam for a visit, uh, you know, you cannot sit, you cannot yeah. sit quiet, you have to do something. On Friday, you visited that school in Guwahati. Yeah. My question is, 
as far as Raj Bhavan in Nagaland is concerned, I understand that you hold up to 150 meetings every month. Mm. What do you really do? See, there are many problems. Why do you do this? Yeah, there are many problems of the people. And Raj Bhavan is a center of power. They have high respect for the Raj Bhavan. Right. If a power person, if I can empower an unempowered person by visit, asking to visit Raj Bhavan, if Modi ji invites me, I am getting empowerment. I would like to touch him. I would like to embrace him. I would like to say namaste. So also my position, I am not PB Acharya. As a governor of Nagaland, right. a lot of the respect is there. Entering Raj Bhavan is also empowers many poor people. Yes, I have been to Raj Bhavan. Sitting with me, having a cup of tea or lunch, nothing like that. They will take the photograph. That has to be done. Our people who are working for the society, giving service to the society, I, I, feel right. that they are nobody. Absolutely. That should be gone. I understand that you know you have, you you invite the people from the poor strata, lower strata of society, yeah. uh, and you know uh, you inquire whether they are benefiting from the government schemes. Do you do that? Yeah. It is not only post as even the highest people, Naga Scholar Association, you have a duty toward them. Don't make your education empowerment self-centered. It has to be society-centered. Because we have five universities, and as on today, nearly 300,000 graduates from different faculties. No, con no state, no society is so empowered with education. Only mindset has to be changed, and Naga is coming Absolutely. back to it. That uh, can be done. Uh, you know, all good conversations or all good things have to come to an end. My final question to you. Yeah. Uh, we have been we have spent a considerable amount of time during this conversation on peace. Mm -hmm. Finally, what is your appeal to a group, or the, for that matter, let's generalize it, the Naga insurgent groups? You are having ceasefire in Nagaland, but there are killings going on uh, in neighboring states. Mm -hmm. So, do you think if you are having a ceasefire, it's not important, the, you know, in black and white, where is the jurisdiction? But you are talking to the government of India to achieve or arrive at a peace agreement. So, what is your appeal to the Naga insurgents at this point in time? Final so, question. The first thing is to the government, the fruits of independence should reach equitably to all the places. That should be done. That should be the goal. Sabke saath, sabke vikas, or sabke vishwas. Wonderful thing. My appeal to the Nagas, <coughs> all the tribal people in the uh, most uh, sensitive area of Northeast, because we are surrounded by almost all states have got international borders. Right. Our education is wonderful education. It should not be self-centered. And everyone who is an educated person should think of his village, think of his um, tribe, and think of his state to upliftment. Going out of the state for a job and giving their empowered knowledge to make others rich should be secondary. Sacrifice something and work is worship. That is not happening. Our education has made them babus. They want only government jobs. Government is full of jobs. So you have go and skill Absolutely. and do that. Absolutely. It will be great. Absolutely. Great Let's day. hope uh, better days come uh, in Nagaland or for that matter, the entire Northeast, and we have a peace, Sir, uh, I assure peace you, agreement while you were still the governor of Nagaland. I am very happy that you invited me, but I assure you, my sister, I'm 88 years before my death, before I leave this world. India will be a very strong, prosperous Absolutely. and peaceful country. Absolutely. We Thank all you. hope and we want that. Thank you very Sam much for being here. the Bharat, Shashakta Bharat, Nirogi Bharat and Shantimai Bharat will be the goal and within five years we'll reach. We have Absolutely. the potentiality. Absolutely. Namaskar to all of you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.